You're tuned into the Sports Mix on Talk Radio WRNR 106.5 FM, AM 740, and TV 10. Everybody's excited why Wednesdays is back. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Shepard with the well-executed swing pass. I never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. It's Wyatt Wednesday here on the Sports Mix. Nick Verzalini, Kyle McLaughlin, and now joined by Shepard offensive lineman Wyatt Pelicano. Wyatt, how are you today? I am absolutely fantastic. It is Wednesday on a game on a home game week in Shepherdstown, and I mean, what more could what more is there to say? You know, I mean, there are only so many uh, so many weeks like this that I'll get to enjoy in my lifetime, and this is one of them. So I'm I'm ecstatic. Wyatt, let's get right into it then. Last week on the road, unfortunately, an upset for Shepard, falling 14-10 to 10 to Bloomsburg. What's been the reaction and the response from the team this week? Yeah, I mean, obviously that was, uh, that was an embarrassing loss for us. Uh, there's, no, there's no really other way to say it. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat it or, or dress it up and, and put it any other way. You know that's a that's a loss that is going to eat me eat at me for probably the rest of my life. I know that it'll eat at Coach McCook, um, and, and I just I mean that's one of those ones that it's like it, it really hurts. You know it's not it's not at all what we wanted. We expect to win every week. Uh, we we went in there and it just it's it is what it is. That's why you play the game, right? You know I mean I think if we play those guys ten times, we win nine. But uh, that was the one week. So I mean again, it's why we play the game. Uh, we gotta. We we watched the tape. We we've learned from what we needed to learn from. We're burying the tape and we're moving forward because we have an important game that we have to win this week. Why well, you're right. I mean, we we gotta kind of move forward, obviously, and we don't want to spend too much time on it. But I guess when you look back at the tape, what do you think kind of went wrong in the game? Um. Yeah, you know, it's 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 hard to pick any one thing. You know, I'm a big believer in uh, you win as a team and you lose as a team. And I'm, I've never really been big on pointing fingers or, or trying to uh, give ownerships of wins or losses to any one person, you know. So I, I believe that there's definitely stuff that we all could have done better. And I think that uh, Saturday was just a result of us not executing at a high level or not playing the brand of Shepherd football that we should be playing. What are some steps uh, or just from a leadership perspective that you have on this team that you're trying to get everybody back in the right mindset for the final two weeks, especially this week, a very big matchup against East Stroudsburg. Yeah, I think uh, I think that actually, uh, you know, there's there's really I think in my college experience, which of course is limited, you know, because as is anybody's in my opinion, it's, it's a short time to play. But in my college experience, uh, after taking a, a loss of any kind at Shepherd, or I mean, especially one that's that's an upset like this. Um, there's two ways that, that, that you can rebound from it. You know, the, you, you can either point the fingers, uh, you know, start to, start to turn blame and, and blame it on everybody else, turn on each other, or it, it can bring you together as a team, realize that we're in this thing together regardless, right, and that we have to play together better as a team and do what we can do to win the next game. And I think that that is what this has done. You know, I feel like the, the immediate vibe after the game was a, I mean, obviously nobody was happy and there was no smiling at all or anything like that, but, but we lost together. You know, and I think that that is important because really you only, you only lose if you don't learn from it. And that, I think we, we've learned from the mistakes and I think that it has brought us together as a team. Everybody knows the situation now. You know, it, it's, uh, it's not totally in our control anymore. We have to play like we want it to be, you know. So we have uh, a number four in the region ranked team coming in here in East Stroudsburg. Right now we're sitting at number nine, I believe, on the on the ranking list, and we got to get down to seven. And we have an opportunity to prove our worth and get there this week, I believe. So I think that we have to do everything we can and play this game. We have to play every game for the rest of the season like it's a championship. And I think that that is the the vibe from the leadership of the team. I think that that's the message. I think everybody's on board with that message. And we're going to – we're playing the rest of the season. We're going to play until somebody tells us we can't anymore. 
Yeah, Wyatt, I mean, you touched on it there. The loss, while it obviously hurts things, uh, you're still in the playoff picture. You still have a chance to meet that standard, which we talk about the standards all the time at the offensive line, and the standard at Shepard being the last two years winning a regional championship and then kind of seeing what you guys can do from there. Um, you're still in position to do that, but like you said, it's not really up to you guys in terms of, or you're only really able to control what you can control, which is winning the next two weeks. And um, I guess how do you how do you keep that mindset moving into these final two games, knowing that you know really you at least want to know that you went out on a on a good note on the season and didn't let this loss turn into three or four losses on the year. Yeah, I think. Um... I think that really when you take a step back at it, I mean, even if you were to say that that loss was to take everything from us, which, I mean, it still could have. You know, it, it's not up to us anymore. Uh, it, it's up to a group that gets to decide our fate based on and judge us based on a, a win and loss record in, in, a, in a collection of scores, right? Which, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's not an ideal situation, but it's the one that we as a team have created for ourselves. So we have nobody else to point the finger at but ourselves, and we know that. Uh, but at this point, it, it's it's more than just playing for playoff hopes, in my opinion. It's more than just playing for uh, a shot at a region or, or to try to maintain the standard anymore. To me, I think that these next two weeks, are you, we're playing for pride. You know, we have two teams that are going to come into our stadium and look at us like we're a wounded animal that that is rolling over and done, uh, a vulnerable animal. You know, like everybody is, is saying that our program is bleeding now. You know, and, and I think that at this point, we have nothing to play for but our pride and to show that the Shepherd Rams are still here. We are still the Shepherd Rams. And that last week was a freak accident that is a, an extreme rarity that will not occur again because we won't let it. Wyatt, let's now focus in on this week's matchup against East Stroudsburg. What has jumped out to you from the film that you've gotten to see from them so far? They are an extremely competitive team. They uh, they are going to give us uh, they're going to give us their best. They know what's at stake for them. They they are in control of their own destiny. They're sitting in a in a solid number four spot. Uh, they have everything to lose. We have everything to gain, and I anticipate them to be prepared for everything that we're going to throw at them. You know, this is not going to be a easy game. I think that I think that we are we are going to have to give these dudes everything that we got. This is a solid team, and let's not forget that just last year on their field, Tyson stole their coach's record. So there's there's I'm sure that they have some personal beef with us, as does everybody else in Division Two. Um, so we got to be prepared for their best because that's what they're going to give us. But I, I I will stand on this. After a win, after a loss, it doesn't matter. There is not a defense in Division Two that can stop this offense when it's fully clicking. So we got to just make sure that we're in that state of perfection and and moving the ball the way that we know how. And I don't think I don't think that we can be stopped that way. Why this might be a loaded question, but I feel like it's a great follow up because of your answer. You mentioned it right at the beginning. They're going to give you their best and. Every week, either you, Coach McCook, it just seems like it's known because of the history that this program has and the success that it's had at being Shepard. Everybody wants to make sure that they're giving the Rams their best when they go out there, To even if it's an upset like Bloomsburg or just a team like Cudstown, try to be that better team that week. How tough is it on your guys' end making sure that every week you guys are at your best compared to for your opponents it just even though they want to be their best every week it's only one shot for them against you guys but week in and week out it's you guys versus them yeah I I actually kind of thought about that uh I was thinking about that I think it was last week because it it is a very it's a real feeling you know that feeling of like well it feels like every week we're playing another team Super Bowl you know, like everybody is, I mean, and I don't know if they left the cameras rolling after the game Saturday, but those dudes were celebrating like they won the Super Bowl, and as they should. You know, I think it's a, it's a Nick Saban quote, and not that we are on anywhere near the same caliber as a program as Alabama, but I feel like the feeling is the same. You know, when you beat Shepard, you know, you storm the field. You, you celebrate. You parade. It's a, it's a party because it happens so rarely. 
You know, where we are, everybody, everybody wants to see us lose. You know, we're, it, it's a tough thing knowing that we have to go out there and, and play in that type of environment every week, but it's what we signed up for. You know, and again, you, we talk about, oh, it, it, the standard is the standard. That is the standard for us. You know, it, when you sign your papers saying that you want to be a Shepherd football player and they give you your pads, that's part of the agreement. Is you got to know that every week it's personal because it's personal for the other guys. So you got to find a way to make it personal for yourself. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to compete. And, I mean, it, it's just, yeah. I mean, like I said, those dudes, they're going to storm the field. And, and I think it's just, it is, it is what it is. We have to, we have to prepare and continue to play at, at that high level and play every game like it's a championship. Uh, but that's, that's what we do. And again, that is what Shepherd football is. And that's what we embody. That's what we own. And we can't, we can't speak that way and, and talk trash on it the way that we do, like the way I'm doing right now and saying that that is our brand of football. We can't say it unless we walk the walk too. And last week we didn't walk the walk. So we have to prove to the rest of the world and back up everything that we say and stand ten toes down on, on all of the on all of the stuff that we have been saying we are. Well, I did want to go back to the Bloomsburg game, but for a positive thing from the game, uh, Ethan Williams, a guy that you grew up with, led your team in receiving yards and scored his first touchdown. Uh, just you know, knowing Ethan as long as you you have, and to see how much work he's put in and, and the fact that he's a guy that you know transferred down from D1. Um, for him to get into the end zone, what was that like for you guys? Yeah, that was awesome. You know, I mean, uh, nobody is uh, – I don't think anybody's cheering harder for that dude than I am. You know, uh, that's what I've said before on here. That's like a big brother to me. Um, it's super cool to see him get his flowers and to do all that. Obviously, I wish the circumstances were different and we could have celebrated it maybe a little bit better and harder after a win. Um, and, it, and it's kind of a shame that it has to get overshadowed by such a crazy loss. Um, but yeah, no, that was definitely, it was definitely a cool moment, uh, for me. I'm, I know it was a good moment or a great moment for him, um, to see him finally get in the end zone the way he wanted to. Cause obviously he had that, uh, part recovery touchdown last week or two weeks ago against Westchester. Um, but yeah, I know he was ecstatic about it. And it, it was, it was a very cool, wholesome moment for me as a, as a teammate of a long time to see him go out there and, uh, and run that touchdown in. And Wyatt, I'll keep it on a positive note from last week. Uh, for the offensive line, you guys have a clean sheet when it comes to sacks allowed. So just talk a little bit about that and the positiveness that you can build off from. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like when, when we came in, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. Like after a loss like that, I, the last thing I want to do is, is look at it right away. You know, I just lived it. I felt like I was out there. You feel like you, you see it all. Uh, you see it all clearly when you're when you're when the bullets are flying and you're, and you're in the situation live, right? But I honestly would have never guessed uh, at those stat lines for us, and we had some, we had some pretty impressive ones. Uh, so that, it was a nice silver, silver lining coming in on Sunday and seeing that up on the board. Um, but, again, it, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's comforting. It's great. You can see it. It's good to see that we're stacking good weeks in the run game, um, you know, like statistically. But at the end of the day, the only the only stat column I've been concerned with my entire career here at Shepherd is the win and loss record. So if we take a loss, the, the, to me, the rest of the stats are a wash. The only thing that we need to watch is the tape and find out how we can improve. I, I feel like the, the action of patting ourselves on the back and, and celebrating a no sad game on a, uh, on a loss is it's, it's just not, it's not productive. And why... You talk about that standard again, and the guy that kind of set that standard, Coach Cater, will be honored this week uh, during the game against East Strasburg. I know you didn't play for Coach Cater, but he's still very much around the program. Uh, how much interaction have you had with him? And I guess just what does it mean to play for him this week? Uh, yeah, I've had I've had a few interactions with Coach Cater. He's a very awesome guy. Um, I will say this. There is nobody that sings that dude's praises more than Coach McCook. So, I mean, in, in my eyes, it's like almost like he walks on water, you know, the stories that Coach McCook will tell. Um, so I have a lot of respect for him. I have, just as I do anybody who has put the time and effort or anywhere close to the time and effort into this football program as that dude has, which I don't know if anybody has besides maybe Coach McCook might be getting up there. Um, but that dude bleeds blue and gold. Um, he's one of us. 
You know, so it, it's always, and I like to feel like we're playing for, for, for him and anybody else that used to wear this uniform every week. You know, I think that it's a, it's an honor. It's a, it's a, it's a great honor to wear these colors and to go out there and be able to, to put on for the brand that is Shepherd University. Um, but yeah, it definitely will have a, an extra special feeling this week knowing that we're, we're doing that with him in the building and him being honored, uh, that day for the game and everything. It, it'll be, a, it'll be a very cool moment. And why one thing that I think is, uh, interesting about D2 is a lot of the guys have a lot of different journeys and and Tyson's talked about this a lot how he was kind of overlooked coming out of high school um and we talked about like Ethan Williams transferring in what was your uh, journey to Shepard like and I guess your your recruitment out of high school and everything like that um you know I, I don't know if mine is the same as, as those dudes you know Ethan had a very complex story you know he, he's been to a different school and I think it's uh it's funny, right? Because Shepherd Shepherd is a crazy place for so many reasons. I, I really believe that this campus is is magical. Um, I think that there's just something in the water and in the air here that makes it that way. Uh, but I think that everybody is here for a reason, you know. And and, and the reasons are very different. For me, it was I had a very traditional recruitment process, you know. Like uh, Coach Hassan Mori came. Uh, it was he, he brought me on a visit up here. He came and visited me at my home school, Archbishop Spalding. You know, and, and, and it was a super normal process. And I didn't realize when I, like, I not didn't realize, but when I got here, I had no idea how many people did not have that process. You know, like, and how, how many people were coming from different schools out of transfer portals or from junior colleges or, or this, that, the third, or, like, how Tyson talked about how many people were just, like, probably could have been D1 but just kind of slipped off that radar. And it's, like, Everybody has these different stories. And then at the same time, you still have the people that, like me, where it was just, like, Shepard is a normal, like, I, I'm having a fairly normal college experience. You know, like, I'm away from home, and it's like, I'm, I'm, this to me is a normal thing. But then again, it's like, you also have people like my roommate Malachi, where he grew, grew up being a Shepard fan. You know, and it's like, it's Tyson, the same way. You know, and these dudes get to play for their local university, and it means so much more to them. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of what I've been doing in my time here and through that recruitment process was trying to kindle and create that same love for the game that those dudes have who have grown up here their whole lives. You know, so I think that that's been a huge, that was a huge part of it. Um, and, and like the main challenge, but I, I, it is, it is a crazy thing. So my, my process was pretty mundane. You know, I don't want to sit here and bore you guys with the normal details of like when my visits were or anything like that, you know, but it, it's it's a it was a crazy feeling or a crazy discovery for me to find out uh, how many people didn't have that normal mundane process that are here and performing on the field on Saturdays. All right, Wyatt, got to wrap things up here because we're getting short on time. But appreciate you as always for joining us here today, and talk to you again next week.